Officials thought no one could live this long in the rubble. Trapped for three days, this teenager only survived because plans to turn this into a clearance operation were delayed. I went down and saw 15 more people were alive. We will be able to bring them out after we cut seven more iron rods. The decision to keep looking for survivors ensured a hundred more were brought out alive. In this 35 degree heat, the greatest threat is dehydration. Rescuers still cautiously using hammers, shovels and their bare hands because they know there are lives still to be saved. She is my wife. We talked over the phone a few moments ago. She's alive. She's lying beside a bathroom there along with three other people. The owner and managing director of one of the factories have given themselves up to police. They, along with an engineer, have appeared in court. The building's owner, though, remains on the run. It's now known that its upper floors have been added without permission. On the walls of a nearby school, relatives of the missing post photographs, hopeful their loved ones have survived. Hope, though, has turned to despair and frustration for those whose relatives have not yet been found. Where have they gone? There were hundreds of workers. Now they're not getting them out, alive or dead. Please let us get them either dead or alive. Many will never know for sure what happened, as recovered bodies are taken straight away for burial to prevent the spread of disease. The bodies we're now recovering don't have identities. No one's claimed them. Most are decomposed, so we've given them for burial as they've begun to smell. Three and a half million work in the textile industry here. They are poorly paid and poorly cared for. Low standards have cost lives before, and few have faith in the government's promises to prosecute those responsible. Ty Genright, Sky News.